Bill Burr's comedic styling is brash and unapologetic. He's got a unique talent for taking a minuscule topic and transforming it into a masterful rant. He's known for saying whatever he wants and it often seems like he's tired of everyone around him for not having common sense. Whether it's a short television interview or an hour-long podcast, no interviewer is immune to his comedic style. While he may appear to be a cliché comedian with a temper, those who have followed his career know that he is well-educated and adept at pinpointing people's insecurities. He brings these hidden flaws to light, making what we all see but couldn't put into words glaringly obvious. These are some of the people who have been destroyed by Bill Burr starting with Ethan Klein. I'm sure Ethan was excited to have someone as respected as Bill Burr on his podcast, but that excitement was overshadowed by his outright nervousness. What What is this? You've probably heard this a lot, that people say that dentists are like high rate of right? What is, is there something to that? Have you heard that? Uh, yeah, I think everybody heard that growing up, but I never knew it's one. So that, no, maybe never it's not knew. even true. I've never known one that sells. So, yeah. Is yeah. this the Oprah part where you're going to try to get me to cry? Yeah, well, I got nothing he to work He thought with. about it one night. <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. I just thought that was an interesting thing. It's just one of those things. Mm. Where... It was clear that Ethan was nervous. It reminds me of that SNL sketch where Farley interviews famous people. Hi, I'm Chris Farley, and this is the Chris, this is the Chris Farley show. And uh, tonight, uh, my host is Jeff Daniels, one of the greatest actors. Um around i guess <laughs> bill was friendly in the beginning of the podcast but as the show goes on ethan's awkwardness gets worse and worse and bill can't help himself oh it seems like you're in love with your daughter hearing you talk about her on the podcast jesus yeah. christ well you're pretty perceptive you think you care <laughs> well, about your own I, child listen more than that okay because again you, you're this character you uh, gush you gush over your daughter not everyone gushes did your dad gush over you uh i mean i was too little yeah no my dad was my dad actually <laughs> at work did at work, that's when I learned, like, oh, he my got... God, yeah, he really likes us. <laughs> oh. But when he came home, yeah, he was that's cracking funny. the whip. <laughs> mm. How's your bed, mate? You do your studies? Mm. Well, why not? You know, mm -hmm. that. Mm. And uh, he also had a zillion kids, so, I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings many? do you have? I don't know, dude. The Internet's too <laughs> weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking privacy. about it. Is there anybody you can <laughs> cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, oh. dude. I, yeah, there's politics out there. Okay. Well, off the air, off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Jeez. I love how surprised he is. Jeez. Well, it's you actually, can mention the amount. It's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Okay. Bill is a successful comedian and actor, but he still manages to stay grounded. The basic sit down style interview seems so boring to him that he can't help but lash out. Near the end of the podcast, Ethan is falling apart, and Bill can tell, so he takes it easy on him. I don't know why that's got it so <laughs> flat uh, on my part. Tell me about uh, all things comedy. I don't know. You say I'm nervous. I'm sweating here. I'm just going to let you sit. Yeah, I know point. you are. You don't have you to got, save you, me. You've you got to push through to the other side. It's no, I great. know, but you don't, you don't have great. to save Look at you. me. You're all sweaty. You're touching. Like. Dude, if you were a right? reliever right okay? now, if you were a reliever on the other team, I'd have to come out and check you for Vaseline or something. You touched your hair and your brill a little too many times. He's doctoring the ball. All right, regroup. Here Where we go. Where were we? <laughs> Um, Greg Jackie Gleason. We'll get back to that podcast in just a moment, but for now we'll move on to victim number two, Theo Vaughn. Theo is one of the most famous comedians in America, but around the time he had Bill Burr on his podcast, he hadn't quite made it to the level he is now. Yeah, I feel like I, uh, that's one yeah. of the reasons why I think acting is real scary to me because I really kind of, I guess I kind of treasure the things that I do do comedically, right. and so I just don't want to leave him at the at the whims of some other, you know, some guy who's been up for four. Did you just days. say you treasure? What you do, like literally your oh, act, yeah. you're worried that some big Hollywood director, <laughs> you, just, you can't take your comedic skills and say what somebody else wrote. But, you treasure your act so much. Is no, that the, what you're trying to tell me? The way me? that I present it, man. This dude is going to be such a nightmare when he makes it. <laughs> I, I, love I treasure these jokes. How dare you this... this what Wait, do they call it? This is this is vulgar. This no, edit is no. vulgar. I just think I have a tough time working with other people sometimes, you know, which is one of the reasons why I got into comedy anyway. You know, I just think. Well, I, I would say get over that. Yeah. Get over yourself and get over that because there's a lot of great people in this business and you're going to miss out. Yeah, I, I, I would. Get, is that me? Sorry. I would try to get over whatever social thing that that is. Yeah. Yeah. Theo, like Ethan, seems to be starstruck. Instead of just having a conversation, it feels like they overprepared, or like they're trying to impress Burr instead of just being themselves. And if you follow Burr, then you know he's not one who enjoys being praised. Scott Van Pelt said it best, treat superstars like normal people and normal people like superstars. To avoid his wrath, I think podcasters just need to treat him like a normal person. 
Like Harlan did. You know what? Let you me know? tell you. I want to tell you two things. When the sun and the moon is out at the same time, so, you like you had to do the math real quick. Oh, that's right. Those are two different things. Listen to me. Shh. The pointing was enough. You didn't have to shush me. Shh. Again. <laughs> through the mist. Shh. God. I've never shushed someone through the gorillas in the mist. I was going to say, was that a Sigourney Shh. Weaver movie? Yeah, this is now it's Shushing turning in the to mist. shut the f- up, guy. Yeah. So when, when she resents the gorillas, guy, shh. When I was gonna take you out to the desert, take me out to shh. the desert. Take shh. me out. To- when it comes to the interview with Theo, though, you get the sense that he is putting Bill on a pedestal, and if the audience can sense it, so can Burr. His natural instinct is to call out the obvious, even if it's awkward and at the expense of the person sitting across from him. Then a Mary Tyler Moore no, show. She'd have a rough day, and she'd come in. And I don't would, remember the whole show. I can explain it to you. Yeah. If I can explain it to okay. you. <laughs> I just, ba- I don't know what that is. All right. No, I believe I it. I don't know. I don't know. And the second I started to explain it, like, I don't know the whole show. All right. I get it. I get it. I believe it's it. that comic ADD. Like, I, I don't want to, I'm not into it. I don't want to hear it. I got it. Your show. Go ahead. Continue. I, I remember. Uh, all right. Let's talk about old shows then. I we re- don't have to. I just was, it was so funny how you. You bailed twice. It seems like Theo and Burr weren't able to get on the same page. Theo isn't as comfortable in this podcast as he is now. Instead of just having a conversation, he tried to make it more than it was. Almost like he was trying to relate to Burr through both being comedians. I was just like experiencing like a ton of stress, man. Burnt out. You know, I've been on the same tour for this hour for almost over a year now. You gotta toughen up, man. Yeah, you're right, huh? You know? What do I do, you Camouflage hat looking like a f***ing backwoods guy, all tough and shit. You can't handle... Doing your hour again? I mean, come on, man. Suck it up. I think Theo was hoping to connect with Burr and thought he would relate to how tough it is being on the road. But Burr is from Boston. He knows what having a difficult job looks like, and to him, comedy is not difficult. It gets to the point where Burr is like, you want advice? Okay. I just think I have a tough time working with other people sometimes, you know? You know, I just think- Well, I would say get over that. Get over yourself and get over that because there's a lot of great people in this business and you're gonna miss out. And uh, I don't know. No, you know what? You'll totally say your loved ones will save money on the funeral costs because no one's gonna go, so there's not gonna be too many f-ing snacks they gotta put together. <laughs> in the end, it was just two dudes who have incredibly different styles of podcasting. Theo is introspective, goofy, and tends to open up more than most. Or is brash, stoic, and doesn't want to talk about his feelings. Near the end of the podcast, it was like Theo had completely shut down, and Bill was trying to coax him out of depression. What about uh, the nice guys. Mm-mm. Oh, you got to see that. I'll watch the nice guys. No, I don't know. I think you're, you're looking down. You got your no, jaw out. You got your jaw. It's very no. confrontation. I'm feeling like you're not liking my suggestions. I, you're just like, you, you like the Ameri- uh, I, Once upon a time in Hollywood, this no. guy's dead to me. He's dead. <laughs> Bill said he had a great time, but fans of Theo could tell it didn't go the greatest. This is like watching two guys having to hang out because their wives are friends. I felt like I was watching a nice dude try to impress his hateful father-in-law, but he's already decided he hates him. Watching this is what it feels like when you make a joke around your parents and they turn it into a lecture. It got to the point where he felt the need to address it a few days later. It was tough. To, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, I was really, really glad that Bill came in. He and I had never had a long conversation uh, in person before, ever. We'd had a couple of conversations on the phone. And so I think it was kind of a new, you know, I don't know if we knew each other's vibes that well. I mean, or I don't think he knew mine very well. And that makes sense. You know, I mean, I'm a oyster, you know, I'm a barnacle and he's a cruise ship, you know, um, and it was tough, man. It was it was tough. Like, I couldn't. It was just a tough conversation, man. It just wasn't. Uh, it wasn't bad. You know what it was? In hindsight, it was exactly what I should have expected. While Theo and Ethan are completely different in almost every aspect, they both share a common bond of being a victim of Burr. For Ethan, the podcast was so rough for him that he sought professional help. Oh, welcome to the Bill Burr Recovery. Group. Yeah, I went into therapy after that episode. I'm not Did even really. I'm not even being kidding. I mean, I, I I was having a depressive episode for a long time, right? And I had these antidepressants next to my bed mm-hmm. for a long time, and, uh, and that, you were taking them. No, I hadn't decided okay. to take them yet. I was uh, hesitant. Yes. Yeah. And after that episode with Bill Burr, I came home, and I that's when I started taking antipress- antidepressants, and I went to therapy. Wow. It was soul crushing. And do you, was it soul crushing because you felt like as an interviewer it was soul crushing or just like as a, on a human level? Like, do you think, do you know the levels where it felt that it hit you? Right. Um, <clears throat> everything, man. My, 
my fans were, I don't know, fans, but the audience were very harsh. Eason admitted that he knew the interview didn't go well, but what really bothered him was his reaction from the YouTube community. Felt like karma since Ethan is known for reacting to similar content. One of the best pieces of advice I've heard for a YouTuber comes from Rogan. Never read the comments. If Ethan had followed this advice, he might have never needed to seek counseling. Rogan is the biggest podcaster on the planet. He's reached a level of celebrity where guests often give him the benefit of the doubt, or at least avoid questioning his beliefs. That's why it was so refreshing to see Bill Burr treat him like any other podcaster, regardless of status. You House. want people to walk down the street with a mask on? Let's not start this, John. Do you, though? Let's not start this. Okay. Let's, let's start it. I, I don't want to start this. But I'm not going to sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up. Better than the CDC. All I do is I listen. I watch the news once every two weeks. I'm like, I I mask or no mask? Still so wearing a mask became like this f like soft thing that you were doing, like yeah, being courteous. Bitches. Being courteous. Why is it for bitches? It I know it's so stupid. Mask. <coughs> First of all, it's oh not god, you're so tough with your f open nose and throat, <laughs> Gee, Joe, and your five o'clock shadow. This is a man right here. For Burr, calling someone out is rarely driven by hate. It's a sign that he likes you and is willing to be brutally honest. A prime example of this is his appearance on Colin Coward's talk show. Coward, who hosted a talk show on ESPN for years, isn't typically accustomed to taking criticism, but he's smart enough to know that when Bill Burr starts, the best approach is to sit back and let him go. I think that uh, they're uncomfortable with my, uh, my um, elevation. Are you uncomfortable with it? No, I just see all of your insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> your giant go, desk. <laughs> when guys come and sit on the couch, I go right after him. Don't you respect me for that? No, I don't. <laughs> your big dumb desk hiding behind your <laughs> microphone. <laughs> You're yeah. in your comedy prime right now. Like this is, you, you got about eight years left. How do you judge that? Because your energy level is high. You're, you're nimble. I mean, dude. And what do you, what do you, dude, I'm not like an athlete. <laughs> I'm going to blow out an Achilles and I can't write a joke anymore. <laughs> Coward and Burr are friends, which is why Coward just sits back and takes it as it comes. However, not everyone is as familiar with Burr's style. Fox 5's morning show news host asked him if he thought his jokes about Christianity went over the line. Brown is, is part of the, the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know. As far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good Lord. So did that, you that, feel that, you were being something. disrespectful or just you, you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, they just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think you know I want to. You know what I'm to. talking about. Bill took it easy on the morning show host. Maybe it was because they weren't trying to be disrespectful, but were just being lazy at their job. However, the same can't be said for his most infamous ran of all time, the time he ruined the entire city of Philadelphia. Bill was rising through the ranks of the comedy scene, doing stand-up on Comedy Central and making regular appearances on The Chappelle Show. His success landed him a spot on the Opie and Anthony comedy tour. The third stop on the tour was Philly. The crowd was drunk and unruly, so much so that the first act was booed off the stage and several other comedians weren't able to last their entire 20 minute set. By the time Bill got to the stage, he had had enough and lashed out on behalf of his friends and fellow comedians. Oh, f all you people. You know what, you fing losers? I hope you all fing die and I hope the fing Eagles never win the Super Bowl. Go fing yourself. Let's talk about heart disease, something you're all gonna fing die of and I'm gonna laugh at your fing funerals. It's gonna be great. Which is fantastic because all your f***ing heads are shaved anyways. No one's even going to notice. Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a f***ing guy who doesn't even exist. What do you have to say, sir? Never passed the f***ing eighth grade. What brilliant s*** are you going to f***ing tell me, huh? Go back to the dock and go unload some s***. You f***ing warehouse working, weed smoking f***ing disappointment for your mother. Seven mother f***ing minutes left. Ironically, Bill was able to win an entire city of hecklers over by doing what he does best, 
being brash and unapologetic. The rant made national headlines. It solidified his persona as a loud jerk with a bad temper. But what people didn't understand was that Bill wasn't being an outright bully. He was just sticking up for his friends. In retrospect, Bill wished he had handled the situation differently. You can see how he changed his tune over the years when he appeared on the podcast with Ethan. In the beginning of the podcast, Ethan was clearly nervous. You know what I mean? If yeah. you went to, to whatever Comic Con of right. podcasting, would you be nervous? Yes. All I'm right. Well, you're, well, you're, you're, you're talking person. to a nervous I'm, guy. I'm, a ner I'm so neurotic. I am nervous. I'm nervous right now. Okay. Very nervous. <laughs> Ethan should have probably never said he was nervous. Him saying that was almost like a compliment to Burr for being a famous comedian. If anything makes Burr uncomfortable, it's being complimented. After holding it together for most of the podcast, Ethan's nerves got the best of him, and he continuously interrupted Burr. I don't know. I mean, you're right. You're really. You're, you're I mean, boring. he's doing this. I mean, how much? What does that do? You, need so you got this sh kicked shit. out of your yeah, sure. for a while. So you, it's LCD. You're kind of looking. Oh, yours? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to diagnose you. I have no idea. Burr was being a good guest and didn't call Ethan out for interrupting. Maybe because Ethan had already stated that he was nervous. But as the podcast went on, Ethan kept interrupting him, nervously interjecting and trying to finish Burr's sentences. Burr was cordial at first, but when Ethan pressed Bill on a question he didn't want to answer, things got awkward. You're in love with your daughter, hearing you talk about her on the podcast. Jesus Christ. Well, you're pretty perceptive. You take a care about <laughs> well, your own I child. Well, I listen. Uh, you also had a zillion kids, so I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings do you have? I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, not compromise means, your privacy. Yeah, by all talking about it. Is there anybody you can cut <laughs> this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, oh. dude. I, yeah, there's lunatics out there. Okay. Well, Off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez. Well, it's you actually, can mention the amount. It's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy. People. Most interviewers would quickly move on to another subject if their guest became uncomfortable. But because Ethan was nervous, I don't think he could tell if Bill was being serious or not. And when it finally came to the realization that Bill didn't want to discuss his family, it was already too late. So when he said, geez, it comes off as a slight to Burr. As the podcast goes on, Burr's patience wears off when Ethan asks him about Philadelphia. You were getting booed by... Thousands oh God, of people I was, I was hoping Philly. you were. I was like, when you said uh, my favorite you YouTube video, I was like, oh, God, not the Philly thing again. Mm -hmm. And then you did the Sherry's Berries. I was like, I love this podcast. <laughs> now I hate you. Oh, no. I love oh, What I can I do? I love that. I'm joking. I'm fucking with you. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> but do you? Well, but, but, no. Bring a hat no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask you. People were bullet. And you've been booed before. <laughs> you, you've talked about this a lot. Yeah, probably more than the grape lady. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yes. realize. No, but I go ahead. Uh, let's well, do it. Well, let's now, do it. I, I, frankly, I like, you know, I, I, I like, like making you, it. I like making you uncomfortable. Burr has talked about the Philadelphia incident more times than he would have ever liked. He's not proud of it and doesn't see it as a badge of honor like comedy fans do. But still, he was a good guest and indulged Ethan, even though he wasn't happy about it. I love that moment. I love everything you do. The great, great. This is how you turn it around. This is how you turn it around. Uh, where I made I'll... you uncomfortable. Now you fucking sit here and compliment me. <laughs> I almost made it through without uh, making an ass of myself. I got so close. What are you talking about? I had a great time. <laughs> I did too. I really did. I hope you did. I'm worried about you. I did. Thank God I, you I, got, I'm playing wait. it up. I'm playing it up. All right. But I'm, playing, that, I'm trying to be funny. But. When Ethan sighed in defeat, it came off the same as the end of the Theo podcast when Theo's jaw was out and he was being short. Ethan interrupting Bill when he's getting started to go on a rant is like me interrupting a Led Zeppelin solo in concert because I feel like whistling. Ethan skipped all the side quests and went straight for the boss. This actually got off to a great start and Bill gives him a few outs but gets exhausted from the weird questions and goes in. From an outsider's point of view, it may look like Bill is just picking on people who aren't on the same level as him. But that's not the case. One of his most recent podcast appearances was on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast. Bill Maher is no amateur. He's a writer, producer, political commentator, actor, and television host. In 2022, Maher started the podcast Club Random. Throughout the podcast with Burr, he constantly tries to win the conversation instead of just having a conversation. It's, it's gauche. But, yeah. Here you go again I mean, with the big words. <laughs> what does gauche mean? I, I've heard the word. <laughs> It means great in French. Gauche? No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> Manufique. Do you remember when you were on Real Say Dog? Say Manufique, monsieur. That, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's you're, you're in the highlight reel. Super. I'm you're, on the same page with you. Oh, I know. I know young people. You're, no, you're no. Zeppelin. I know I, that happens I, a I, lot. No, I, I That's know. in vogue I'm for a, young kids to say the Beatles stink. I can always talk Beatles. And um, one reason they are 
prima inter pares among rock gods is that they... <laughs> I've never heard all of those words. Is that three words? Is that two that, words? That's Latin for first among equals. Don't you save that for your parties when you're wearing your smoking just, jacket? I, I'll tell you that Bill Maher is really smart. He is really well read. He just said prima paravardis. Prima inter paris. Inter paris. You know what? I'm not the bad guy because I know more. Okay, can we just get that? That's back? right. Don't can make we just me, don't make me exactly. I'm not the bad guy because I know things. I apologize. You should say, I'm sorry, I'm not stupid, Bill. Point. That's what you should have said. <laughs> it's clear that Marr and Burr are friends. But near the end of the podcast, Burr has had enough of Marr's pretentious attitude and straight up says all the things that listeners want to say. Let me tell you something, Bill. Most of it you say is not smart. It's just sort of obscure. <laughs> it's not obscure to a certain percentage of people. Yeah, I'm people not, that are I'm in not your not some giant egghead, ed, egghead. I'm just I like... Know, I know you're not that smart. I know. I'm not saying I am. <laughs> which says something about all these things I say that you don't know what I'm talking about. So what? I, I know. I, there's subjects I could bring up that's just, you know, you're just into, you know, musical. Mar isn't the only established name to face Burr's wrath. Bill Burt was a podcast Burr co-hosted with fellow comedian Burt Kreischer. Despite expectations that it would last for years, the podcast only ran for 57 episodes. The final straw came during Burr's ran on the last episode. Dan Lebetard was the guest, and while he seemed to be trying to relate to Burr by asking him about the Boston Celtics, Burr took it as a slight. Oh, and we have a wonderful guest who already came in hot. <laughs> the real hot take about the city of Boston. Oh, you the white it, people, because then they get to act like they're not racist and there's no issues in name Mayberry. Live, <laughs> live from the Andy Griffith show, but up, up, we got Dan fucking Levitard. Go ahead, Dan. You lit the fuse, and now you're going to play the victim like some chick on a real housewife show. All right, go ahead, do that. Press charges. Despite Bill destroying and roasting comedians and podcasters for over a decade, he can't stand when people make fun of comedians. One of the most famous examples of this occurred when Burr appeared on an early episode of Kill Tony. Kill Tony's premise is to give comedians one minute to perform their bit. If they're good, it could lead to a promising career. However, if they're bad, it leads to Tony roasting them. Bill wasn't too happy when Tony began roasting the first comedian. I don't have left, I don't... <laughs> Wow, it's a really casual set for you, huh? <laughs> Maybe not. He would have I mean, picked one guy. He would have done that. We were shitting on him. He thought it would work. It didn't work. Yeah. This is brutal. Is this going to be an hour of this? I don't want to do this to people. Horrible. Nobody can be funny in a minute. It's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, no. It it two seconds. Oh, it happens a lot. Jesse just uh, uh, took a real ah, no. You don't even... <laughs> <laughs> After seeing this, it becomes clear that Bird doesn't set out to destroy podcasters or fellow comedians. However, he's the guy that will step in front of a bully. In this instance, he aimed his crosshairs at Tony, and even threatened to quit the show if Tony is mean just to be mean. There's another one mean just to mean. I'm not doing this for a I'm trying to bring it up here. I love it. Jesse, uh, you did so bad, one of our guests is about to quit. Uh, I don't know what else to tell Oh, if there's a negative lining, Tony will find it. There it is, right between the ray of sunshine. There's that little nugget of negativity. Instead of joining in on the roasting, Bill chose to be a positive guest. For the rest of the podcast, he mostly remained quiet only speaking to offer sound advice to the comics. Kill Tony is now one of the biggest live comedy shows in the world, but to this day, Bill has never returned. While Bill comes off as brash and unapologetic, he's actually a softy who stands up for people getting bullied and for truth. Sometimes, interviewers just get caught in the crossfire. You 